thanks mr archer for joining us and uh, sharing your views on uh, higher education at uh, the united states uh, so you've been there for last about a decade and then you went for masters and phd uh, would like to begin by asking you what are some aspects of higher education uh, have you found to be worthwhile being in studying at uh, the united states okay so uh... Uh, since I came in 2015 to do my master's and then right for, after that I started my PhD. So one thing I liked about here is like I, I, I got found of is like they are very uh, into writing part. So when you write something like it, it should be original. Like for example we have to write an essay so you have to be original. There should not be any any element of plagiarism or copy pasting thing. It should be like paraphrase. If you're If you are doing something please credit that to a person, original author. For example, of course, we have we have written so many research papers. So, of course, for research paper, we have to do a literature review and see what others have done in the field. So, once you get the idea of that, and then you can formulate your own methodology. It should not be like you are copy pasting someone else's, and then you're doing the same thing, and then just rebranding it is your work. That that is not accepted here. So, this is one thing I, of course, I liked about. And of course, while also speaking. You should be original like of course even if you have an accent they don't care of course everyone comes from different fields uh, different background different walks of life and then of course it, it really helps it really makes you a diverse uh, candidate as well uh, standout candidate as well so it really helps when you are into this uh, uh, what you call originality spectrum i would say so it, it really does help a candidate as well to be of course uh, should not have a chip on the shoulder i mean no burden on the shoulder and then he can he or she can express the way he or she wants to. So this is what I was fond of, and I'm still is. Thank okay, you. Uh, when you say the content has to be very original, uh, are you trying to say that uh, you would refer a lot of resources, but you'll have your own interpretation based on that, and then the views would be yours? Is that something you're trying to convey? Yes, uh, that that's absolutely correct. Yes, yeah. so we sh views should be a uh, mine. Of course, we can, we read all the uh, all the uh, articles or journals or whatever uh, whatever uh, internet article that you get, and then you formulate the views accordingly and the, based on your comprehension. Of course, it should be of course as in my discipline they always say it should be an unbiased opinion. So mm -hmm. of course, if it's unbiased opinion, I should I should be original as well, and I should not be influenced by someone else. So. Yes, and did you happen to see this even exist in undergraduate as well, or did you see in masters and PhD? Uh, since uh, since I've been teaching this uh, as a professor, of course I'm in a pro I'm a professor of cybersecurity, assistant professor. So I have I have seen this uh, uh, aspect in uh, undergrad students too. Of course, since I've been teaching for like three plus years now, so they are of course into it. But of course, you will see some bad apples, of course, here and there. That try to like take shortcuts and whatnot but of course majority of them i would say 95 percent of them of course over here people are, are sticking with the originality part okay whatever it is you speak or do things on your own then it should be your work it should not be someone else's so yeah undergrad yeah. grad students they do all this thing yeah yeah can you let us uh, know how being original is helping you as individual and do you think the implication for the country okay good question so yeah it really does help me in the way because i i i can see their ideas the original ideas when i read them i get happy like it gives me another perspective like okay i was reading something and okay i missed okay and he this guy wrote something else oh this is the point i have missed so it gives me another like uh, another ammunition okay Maybe I can use this in my next year's teaching or next semester's teaching. So it gives me more ideas. It, it, it just expands my view. So this is this is the thing that I like. Like, okay, for example, I teach cryptography. I miss something. And this guy in a project wrote something. And like, oh, this is this is so, what you call, very good. Why, why can't I apply this thing? It's like an idea after idea that I'm getting. So I, I do like that. I do appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you see because of this, there is a lot a lot of emphasis for the country growth, something like that. Are you trying to make a correlation between that? Uh, with the country growth, yes, of course, they need original thing. That's why they have like a scope, like US patent. You have like project kind of thing. You get a seminar, you get conferences. Of course, you're presenting yourself with original ideas. Of course, when they're doing the cross-examination, you are able to answer those questions instead of stuttering. 
so when you have your own original work you don't have to think like for example if i take if i can take my example i did my own phd uh, on digital digital forensics and i created my own tool because the author of the book he had that uh, he could not uh, complete that portion so i thought this is a opportunity it's a low hanging fruit why don't i just do it and when i was uh, uh, doing the defense of my phd defense and i was so happy about it defending my thing because i knew it like this is what i have done if something good bad or ugly whatever it is come comes up i'll i'll be ready and i'll be okay. honest also yeah so interestingly uh, um, uh, how is that deadline in the time uh, given for you to do something very original work uh, because i'm trying to see and compare understand uh, in india uh, when you're doing an undergraduate course you have five or six subjects and probably two or three laboratories to finish in a semester which will probably pack in a month of three to three and a half months uh, and then you probably do all those in uh, the three months or three and a half months of time so how does it that reflect in that country so compared to india so it's, it's the curriculum in this setup is almost the same uh, in the us as well in the undergrad at least in the undergrad i can compare so yeah they do have labs they do have theory classes but over there i think uh, there's a lot of emphasis on like just complete this stuff as soon as possible like you don't have to know what's going on just do it which is something as a, as a student back in the day it, it really hurts me as well like i cannot flourish in one area i don't have time to complete all the thing i just want to cram it i just want to get it done which i feel which i feel is a defeating for a student as well so i believe like okay yeah if you are getting something there should be a balance of both theory and practical like five big subjects followed by three practical labs it it sometimes becomes a mismatch a person can be good at two and not good not so good at the three and then he struggles in the lab all three lab so what's the point sometimes it's like uh, the tune should match with all the others some student i was a slow learner some students takes like for me it takes time to learn things and i need to know multiple sources to formulate one comprehensive understanding some did not some like to one you just say once and then they get it so it it pick it so everyone should be taken into consideration like of course if you have like 60 students have every them on the have every one of them on the same page otherwise it hurts everyone like it hurts the whole batch too and of course it hurts the result like two two students will be like on the top the rest of them will be at the bottom it doesn't help in the way and then they'll feel defeated demotivated all sorts of stuff this is what i believe okay uh, so uh, how serious are deadlines in uh, in united states because you are trying to bring very original and then mm-hmm. i'm i'm also sure you have some history which is probably spread like for few months of time so how how do they look at the deadlines of finishing things and if you don't finish that how does it look like okay so yeah deadline is one important thing they of course they give you all the heads up uh, way before like as a professor i do the same i give give them the head up and get heads up and then they should work on it they should not be sloppy about it and if they don't of course i of course my syllabus says you have the penalty accordingly so you should be of course mindful of it don't be sloppy about it of course you should work and again the doors are always open every instructor in the in the states will tell you if you are not getting something please let me know or you can of course drop by in the office hour or you can email us we can have a zoom meeting all sorts of stuff so that you understand thing some take advantage of it some does so that 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 is very important thing because of course there is trying to instill that thought because when they are go to corporate world or academia of course that they, they have to the deadline but for example for as an educator we have to do a lot of stuff like writing grant grant has to have a should be submitted in a particular time frame we have a deadline we have a due date meeting we have to be we have to show up and then we have to submit some what you call meeting minutes so on and so forth so of course they, everything has a deadline here and then that, that gives you a sense of responsibility okay this is what it is i have to get it done if it takes time i have to tell my manager or my supervisor beforehand what is happening and what's not and then how if i'm struggling i should be up front with it if i'm not just go ahead and tell just be honest about it okay so, so the reason i'm asking you about deadlines uh, is to understand uh, how well a professor will receive errors uh, mm-hmm. done by students or in uh, i would say the studies looks incomplete 
uh, or it looks like the student is not going to make a progress what they actually even they would have decided earlier so how do how do pro professor and students look at when they see that things look incomplete okay uh, i'll tell you with my experience when i see a student uh, well i do check before the due dates as well if student have of course uh, submitted the work if i see like okay i'll let this give them a chance if they have struggled on something i'll give them the chance i'll not penalize them i'll just okay this is what this is missing you just plug those thing in and you can resubmit the work and then of course you can go ahead with it i'm not going to penalize it and then again if the they have submitted the work and then they think they have submitted the work and what not of course we have a scope of writing feedback to each and every student so we have to write the feedback and telling them what's missing and what's missing if you have done good good for you if you have not this is a struggling area you need to work on so this is how i do it i don't most people do in similar way i know it could be identical i don't know but i can say like yeah we have to get feedback back and so they can also know what they have done and i can also know okay, i have evaluated them in an unbiased way okay uh, there is also a fear and say or a perception that uh, the united states is a place of opportunity for a lot of people who that is why they go to masters and phd uh, and they look forward to be a part of that country so what has been your uh, say on such thoughts uh, if you want to take an honest talk it has been uh... it has been a struggle for sure and over the years because of this immigration and what not influx of students coming in it has of course uh, taken a what you call i would say a toll on on the locals as well like of course uh, we as an immigrant coming to the country we are more passionate about things we are more like okay we will do anything to make it work we will even take the half what you call pay cut and we will we can survive we can we can just sail ourselves in the storm Uh, and over here like be honest like people are a little relaxed if they say okay if this job doesn't work i can take a break we cannot like we have some lot of visa obligations and what not maximum probably be like 60 days grace period after if we if we are fired from a job and we have to find a job and all all sorts of stuff so these are the motivation motivating factors i would say all these thing all the spikes that has been put in front of us and then of course we have to walk on it and these these thing really does help of course we are not sloppy about it if if we slack a bit that will be problem on us because any time they will say oh uh, your time is up please pack your bag and leave so nobody wants to be in that situation it's very heart wrenching to see people going through that phase but compare when you compare this with the locals they are very chill about it so oh, okay just one job okay i'll, I'll probably i'll uh, stay with my parents house and then in a couple of months or 6 months we'll have done something else or so on and so forth so this is one thing i have seen it yeah and we we are more hungry and of course we are always starving <laughs> we are always doing the, doing this hustling of the thing that of course working for it and then of course it it does a, 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 of course we are rewarded for it but then again it takes a toll as well right right yeah uh, and let me go and ask you an expression very little hypothetical Uh, okay. Let's assume that you want to come back to India and become a faculty mm -hmm. in one of the institutions in India. Uh, mm -hmm. Assuming that you probably would join one of the higher one institutions like IITs or NITs or so on, mm -hmm. or private institutions. Um, what would you reconsider in doing in terms of classroom teaching and learning process? Because you are undergraduate student here in India and then you went to masters and PhD. Plus you've been teaching in an university there. Mm -hmm. So what essence would you bring so that you feel that there's something I as a student I should have received? Okay. Yeah. Good. Very good question. So. this is what i felt even after coming uh, to the us i was very very what you nervous when it comes to presentation you might be seeing me talking like i can go on talking okay but uh, before that like when i was a master student i was very really scared like in like speaking because we are always in an india we have always been said like okay you must have heard about this phrase log kya kahenge this is this is common like you cannot form anything in your head it's like okay if if i speak something my thoughts become my speech and once it become the speech and then uh, i'll get the looks from others so of course uh, it should not be con that much controversial that uh, controversial can be defined in different continent i, I don't i want to i don't want to define it but yes this log kya kahenge has literally killed a lot of dreams like 
when I was given the task of teaching 60 students or Java students, first time by my department chair and when I was doing my PhD, I was dead nervous. Only thing I said to that uh, on the day on the podium, what what worse can happen? And then that fear went away. What is the worst thing that can happen? Like, okay, they will probably hate me or something, but I I know my things. If I know my thing, they will they will follow me. It's like the speaker has to control the conversation. This is what I thought. If a speaker can control the conversation, they're all mine. If I cannot, if I cannot control the crowd, if I cannot control the booze and the cheers, I'm using this wrestling terminology because I always watch wrestling and I have learned from a lot of promos. This is how you work with the crowd. If they are getting bored, put some put some jokes in between so that they can relate to it. If they are happy, good. If they are not, try something else. But to always make an active, engaging environment so that everyone can understand. For example, I teach here as a full-time assistant professor. I always joke around, always. And all the serious topic, I make it light-hearted topic because I know I have struggled with it. Like cramming things like the whole day. And then the next morning, I just vomited out on the paper. I just completed my task and I forgot about what, what was the point of learning there. Nothing. I was just cramming things up and reading things and just for no use. Now I can relate it because, oh, this is how it works. This, if, if I hypothetically, if I come to India, I will, I'll do the same thing. I will tell students to participate as well. Give me your thoughts so that I can tweak my style of teaching in the way that you understand. If you don't understand, there's no point. I, I'll feel like I'm cheating on you. This is what I do. <clears throat> okay, wonderful to hear. I think uh, you should con- reconsider thinking of coming back to India and probably be a faculty okay. in one of the institutions in India. I think mm-hmm. uh, okay. we, we definitely need a lot of faculties like this who look at uh, teaching a learning process, not always in dimensions, at times looked in some of the institutions, not all the institutions in India too. Mm-hmm. Um, and create probably more opportunity for children uh, or students to become better learner and probably inspire mm-hmm. others as you're inspiring them. Uh, mm-hmm. Thanks you, thanks Mr. Asher for sharing your views on uh, higher education at the United States of America and letting us know some of the interesting things which you have learned being uh, at uh, the United States. Thanks so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank, you. thank you so much for the opportunity and thank you for letting me speak my mind as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.